Hi, I'm Dr. Neil Renault, Developmental Optometrist at Eagle Eye Performance Vision. Today's the first video in a series of how it works. Today's video is all about pupils, how they work, and how they're very cool. If you enjoy this video, you want to see more, make sure to hit subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and let's get started. So pupils, your pupils are the black hole in the center of your eyes. It's actually a hole. As some say, the eyes are the window to the soul. An optometrist nerd like myself would say that pupils are the window to the brain. Your brain constantly controls your pupils depending on your state of ment your mental state, your environment, the light around you. Your brain constantly controls those pupils to help you see and function better. It's surrounded by the iris and it's covered, it's right behind the cornea, which is basically a windshield over your eyes. So there's a transparent cornea, then the iris with the hole in the middle, that's where your pupil is. And the main purpose of your pupils are to control the amount of light that enters your eyes. When light reaches the back of your eyes, your retina, that's where your rods and cones are, uh, your pupil controls how much light actually rece is received back in the back of your eyes. So your pupils are really, uh, they, they have a big uh, controlling factor of how much light enters to help your brain get the appropriate amount of light to make sense of where you are, see, and function. And your pupils are constantly changing to control that amount of light. It's really similar to a camera. Uh, we, and in fact, cameras were invented to mimic or imitate the way that the optics of your eyes work. Your pupil controls the amount of light entering so that you can uh, have the right amount of, of light hitting the back of the retina. Picture a camera that is, is uh, the focusing lens is changing. It's coming in and out and widening and enlarging. Just like your pupils, as you change your focus, your pupils are getting smaller or bigger depending on what you're looking at. Light is one factor that really impacts the size of your pupils. When you're in a really bright area or you're outdoors in the middle of the day, your pupils are gonna be smaller because they need to let less light in. If you get too much light, then you become light sensitive because there's excessive amounts of light hitting your eyes and it's uncomfortable for you. Versus the opposite, in the dark, your pupils get very big. This enhances your night vision. And, and uh, look at someone in the, in the dark, their pupils will be huge because they're getting as much light entering the eyes as possible since there's so little light in the dark. The more, the more light we let enter uh, through having a large pupil, the more we can see and function in the dark. As the light changes, it can take some time to adapt. So when you first turn the lights off at night and it's pitch black all of a sudden, you notice you really can't see hardly anything. You feel blind, you can't, you uh, have a hard time navigating and seeing where you're going, finding your way to the bed. But over a few, a few minutes, you start to dark adapt, your pupils get nice and huge. And then if you get up in the middle of the night, you actually can see and you can find your way around the house much easier than when you first turn those lights off. Inversely, when you turn the light on, you go to the bathroom, flip the light switch on, and it's super bright you're really light sensitive it stings it hurts because now your pupils are still really big and you're getting lots of light into your eyes too much you need to adapt and bring your pupils smaller to uh, to uh, limit that excessive light so that you're not light sensitive anymore. Another way that our pupils are impacted is through our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Your nervous system in your brain is constantly regulating your body depending on your surrounding and, and what's going on in your life in that moment. So sympathetic nervous system is fight or flight. That is that is where you're protecting yourself, you're hunting. If you look at your cats, uh, they, they are often very nervous or hunting. They've got big pupils. When you're in a sympathetic state, you have big pupils. The opposite, when you're in a parasympathetic state, you're relaxed, you're resting, you're digesting, uh, your body's completely different, your heart rate's lower, you're not breathing so fast, and your pupils get a lot smaller. So the pupil size can be dictated by the, the nervous system that you are in. Sympathetic is big pupils, parasympathetic relaxing is small pupils. One more is your accommodation or your focus. When we look at up close targets like reading, our pupils will get smaller as we as the lens in your eye focuses to make reading material clear. Versus when you look far away, your pupil gets big again, it likes to have lots of light for peripheral vision. Then you have big pupils when you're looking far, 
small pupils when you're looking close. A few more cool things about pupils. When you see the, when you get a red eye image on a, the flash of a camera, you look at someone's eyes and their pupils are red. That's actually where the cameras lined up just perfectly so that light enters the eyes and comes back out reflecting and we actually see the true color of the inside of your eyes which is kind of an orangish red hue. Instead of that black hole in the, in the pupil, we see the true color of it reflecting. Pupil size can also vary from person to person. Usually as we get older, they tend to get smaller. We as the optometrists also, also often ask our patients to have their eyes dilated. Those drops that you get in your eyes, they temporarily paralyze the muscle that makes your pupil small. So we can shine a bunch of light in your eyes without the pupil getting smaller. They stay huge, allowing me to have a big window to look through. When I'm evaluating someone's eye health, I wanna be looking through a big, huge window. I, want, I don't wanna look through a tiny little hole where I can hardly see anything. The bigger window I have, the more I can see to adequately assess ocular health. However, the inconvenient part is for a few hours after, while those drops are still in effect, you, since you cannot change your pupil size, they won't get smaller outdoors, so we're really light sensitive. They also won't get smaller to focus, so that's why it's harder to read while you're dilated. So it's a, it's a necessary inconvenience of getting your eye health thoroughly evaluated, but having blurry vision and light sensitivity for a few hours afterwards because of your temporarily paralyzed pupils. Lastly, different brain injuries and neurological conditions can interfere with your pupil function and cause asymmetry or difficulty constricting or dilating. So that's a really important part of your eye exam is to make sure that your pupils are functioning correctly. Then we know that your brain uh, in a lot of ways is also functioning correctly. The eye is a fascinating organ. I love this stuff, I hope you do too. And the pupil is just one component of the many complex ways that we can see. So stay tuned for more How It Works videos on eyes, brain, vision, and thank you so much for watching.